And I think I'm slightly offended that nobody in the chat guessed it would be me tonight. But hey, everybody, it's AJ! That's right, you were all wrong. All right, it is time for our Monday Night Twitch quiz. How the hell is everybody doing? Are you guys excited to do seven rounds of trivia over the next couple of hours? Because I know I am. We're going to do the usual Geeks Who Drink thing. We're going to do seven rounds of trivia over about two hours. All seven of our rounds are going to have eight questions each, but all of our rounds are not worth eight points. In fact, three of our rounds tonight are worth 16 possible points. Those are specifically round two, round six, and our final round, round seven. Those are all worth 16 points. That all comes into play when you decide how you want to use your Joker. Every team has a Joker you can use once in the entire quiz. Double the points for one round. Use it, it's gone for the rest of the quiz, no matter what anybody in the chat tells you. But it will double the points for the round that you use it on. So if you use it on an 8-point round, you're only going to get 16 possible points. But if you use it on a 16-point round, you'll get 32 possible points. And that's almost always the difference between winning and not winning. But I'm not your dad, so make your own best decisions and joker the round that you feel the most confident about. If you guys need a score sheet to keep track of your answers, you can do exclamation point score sheet in the chat and it'll give you a nice link. And usually there's somebody around like Jerry who will let you text them your answers and they will score those for you. Now for Geeks Who Drink, we only have a couple of rules. Rule number one is the obvious rule and that is no cheating. I know you guys are online, you're probably doing all of this on your computer. Don't pop up a Google tab, look up the answers to questions as I'm asking them. You guys want to know everything in your head or rely on your teammates for the stuff that you don't know. For TS Master tonight on Team One Player, sorry. Rule number two, don't shout out the answers. By that I mean don't put answers in the chat. And... That's pretty much it. That's everything that I have to go over. So why don't we go ahead and just move on and get into round number one tonight. Round number one is... Please quiz behind the yellow line. Please quiz behind the yellow line. Every answer in this round contains letters B-U-S together and in order. Every answer in this round contains letters B-U-S together and in order. Round one, number one. Samuel Aykroyd switched from dentistry to conducting seances in the 20s, inspiring his great-grandson Dan to write what 1984 film? Samuel Aykroyd switched from dentistry to conducting seances in the 20s, inspiring his great-grandson Dan to write what 1984 film? Moving on, round one, number two. Question number two. When the Rangers hosted the World Series last year, the first pitch was thrown out by what ex-president who co-owned the team for a while? When the Rangers hosted the World Series last year, the first pitch was thrown out by what ex-president who co-owned the team for a while? Moving on, round one, number three. Number three. Zillionaires JP Morgan, Andrew Mellon, and Ratan Tata naturally all have buildings named for them at Harvard what school? 
Zillionaires JP Morgan, Andrew Mellon, and Ratan Tata naturally all have buildings named for them at Harvard what school? That's right, Miss Magoo. You can give yourself credit for anything you want, but generally, generally, I recommend being as specific as you can, especially if it's like, you know, a film or a book that's part of a series, you want to kind of narrow that down to the specific film or book in that series. Round one, number four. Number four, the very first time that Congress met in 1789, Virginia's Senate delegation stalled a debate with what blah, blah, blah procedure. The very first time that Congress met in 1789, Virginia's Senate delegation stalled a debate with what blah, blah, blah procedure. I mean, you're not wrong about the country being doomed from the beginning. Round one, number five. Question number five. Guy Fieri recently announced he's opening his first Italian restaurant in what Midwest hometown named for an Italian a-hole? Guy Fieri recently announced he's opening his first Italian restaurant in what Midwest hometown named for an Italian a-hole? Hey, Gabo. Question number one, was Samuel Aykroyd's switch from dentistry to conducting seances in the 20s inspiring his great-grandson to write what 1984 film? And when the Rangers hosted the World Series last year, the first pitch was thrown out by what ex-president who co-owned the team for a while? And now we're moving on to number six. Question number six, math time. Math time. A square is a special example of what shape with equal sides and equal opposite angles. Math time. A square is a special example of what shape with equal sides and equal opposite angles. And moving on, round one, number seven. Number seven, possibly because it got double the caffeine, what macho sounding coffee species is rapidly closing the popularity gap with Arabica? Possibly because it's got double the caffeine, what macho sounding coffee species is rapidly closing the popularity gap with Arabica?
And final question number eight. Number eight, it's plausible that you could lift a car, seal boat leaks, or build a working cannon with just duct tape, according to a single 2009 episode of What Discovery Show? It's plausible that you could lift a car, seal boat leaks, or build a working cannon with just duct tape, according to a single 2009 episode of What Discovery Show? And we'll have a bonus for round one in just a moment. bonus for round one. Bonus question. To celebrate the start of hunting season, what Anheuser-Busch brand puts out camo printed cans every September? Do exclamation point in your answer in the chat. Everybody who submits a bonus or everybody who wins a bonus is also entered into a drawing for a swag box at the end of the quiz. All right, looks like you guys have the bonus answer all figured out, so we are gonna move on to the answers for round one. You have until I read the answer for eh, question number seven to submit a bonus. Let's go through them. Round one, Samuel Aykroyd's switch from dentistry to conducting seances in the 20s, inspiring his great-grandson Dan to write Ghostbusters. Number two, when the Rangers hosted the World Series last year, the first pitch was thrown out by George W. Bush. Number three, zillionaires J.P. Morgan, Andrew Mellon, and Rotan Tata naturally all have buildings named for them at Harvard Business School. Number four, the very first time that Congress met in 1789, Virginia Senate delegation stalled a debate with a filibuster. My favorite filibuster is Patton Oswalt's filibuster in Parks and Rec. Number five, Guy Fieri recently announced he's opening his first Italian restaurant in what Midwest hometown? That is Columbus, Ohio. Number six, math time. A square is a special example of what shape with equal sides and equal opposite angles? That's a rhombus. And number seven, Possibly because it's got double the caffeine, what macho sounding coffee species is rapidly closing the popularity gap with Arabica? That is Robusta. Robusta. And the final question for the round, number eight. It's plausible that you could lift a car, seal boat leaks, or build a working cannon with just duct tape, according to a single episode of Mythbusters. Mythbusters. And it's time for our bonus answer. Don't forget, everyone who wins a bonus question this evening is entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a Geeks Who Drink swag box. Our bonus answer for round one. To celebrate the start of hunting season, what Anheuser-Busch brand put out camo printed cans every September? That's Bush. Bush beer. 
Round number two is going to be an audio-based round. It's specifically a music round this evening. Our theme for round two is This Day in Overplay. This Day in Overplay. This round features Billboard Hot 100 Top 10 Hits from This Day in History. Since we like you, we'll go backward in time from more recent. You just have to name the titles and artists as usual. So it's one point song title, one point artist. If you only know one, but not the other, still put it down because you get a point for that. If you really like your answers for round two, you might want to use your Joker. I'm going to run all eight audio clips for you twice back to back. Let's hit it. Supersonic, hypnotic, funky, fresh With my body so melodic This beat rolls right through my chest Everybody, Martin, Poppy Came to party, grab somebody Work your body, work your body Let me see you When I walk up in the peace I ain't got any speed I'm a bad man, my jumper got dirty Y'all people ain't got it like me
Supersonic hip, naughty, funky, fresh With my body so melodic, this beat rolls right through my chest Everybody, my and poppy, came to party Grab somebody, work your body, work your body Let me see you When I walk up in the peace, I ain't got any speed I'm a bad man, my jumper got dug and y'all people ain't got it like me It's like rain If you really like your answers in round two, you might want to use your joker. Otherwise, don't forget round six and seven are also 16-point rounds. Round two answers. That's the right button. Huzzah! Number one. That is Havana by Camila Cabello, featuring Young Thug. Number two. Team by Lord. Number three, On the Floor by J-Lo, featuring Pitbull and <laughs> Jerfad. It wasn't a 16-point round for us. Number four, The Climb by Miley Cyrus. Number five, that is One Two Step by Ciara, featuring Missy Elliott. And number six, it's Gossip Folks by Missy Elliott, featuring Ludacris. Number seven, Ironic by Alanis Morissette. And number eight, Save the Best for Last by Vanessa Williams. All right, that is the end of round two and our answers. We're going to go ahead and get into round three. I hope everybody did okay. Great Gabbo with a perfect eight-point round. Good job. Good job. Am I Captain America or am I just house-sitting for him and roommate with Captain Britain? I love my shields. I especially love that I finally got a Peggy Carter shield, which is just fabulous. I actually have all four... Four of the five shields that Hasbro has put out for Captain America. The only one I'm missing now is the comic book accurate shield, and it's hard to find and expensive. Round three! Round three tonight is an eight-point round, so if you still have a Joker, don't use it now. Just, just don't. Just don't. It's a bit nippy out there. It's a bit nippy out there. It's Forgive Your Parents Day. So here's a round on people who should forgive their parents, who have clearly done nothing to help further their careers. Nope, nothing at all. Definitely not. It's a bit neppy out there. It's Forgive Your Parents Day. So here's a round on people who should forgive their parents, who have clearly done nothing to help further their careers. Nope, nothing at all. Definitely not. Round three, number one. Because her family connections had nothing to do with her fame, Haley Bieber should forgive Dad Stephen, one of four famous brothers, with what last name? Because her family connections had nothing to do with her fame, Haley Bieber should forgive Dad Stephen, one of four famous brothers, with what last name?
TS Master. Oh, one time at Live Geeks, we jokered round, one to piss off the other teams, and we won. I have seen teams do that live in a venue, and oh man, people get mad. People get real mad about it. Round three, number two. Number two, what sixth president hopefully forgave his dad for making him wait a whole 24 years to take over the family business? What sixth president hopefully forgave his dad for making him wait a whole 24 years to take over the family business? Round three, number three, question number three. It was probably only through a rigorous blind audition process that O'Shea Jackson Jr. got the part playing his dad, Ice Cube, in what 2015 film? It was probably only through a rigorous blind audition process that O'Shea Jackson Jr. got the part playing his dad, Ice Cube, in what 2015 film? And question number four of round three. Fourth question, third round. In spite of being born into what was basically the Kardashians of pre-Soviet Russia, what war and peace author enjoyed no nepotism whatsoever? In spite of being born into what was basically the Kardashians of pre-Soviet Russia, what war and peace author enjoyed no nepotism whatsoever? I think you got it, Gabo. I think you got it figured out. Don't put answers in the chat. Question number five of round three. Number five, thanks to a lack of parental help, Irene Curie only had a Nobel Prize in one of two categories that her mom won. Was that in chemistry or medicine? Thanks to a lack of parental help, Irene Curie only had a Nobel Prize in one of the two categories that her mom won. Is that chemistry or medicine? Question number six of the third round. Question number six. Jack Quaid is currently in a trillion different shows because of his talent and not due to any help from his parents, Dennis Quaid, and who? Jack Quaid is currently in a trillion different shows because of his talent and not due to any help from his parents, Dennis Quaid, and who? Seventh question, round three. 
Number seven, Ben Platt clearly didn't get any help from his movie producing father when he was cast as a high schooler in what musical turned failed 2021 film. Ben Platt clearly didn't get any help from his movie producing father when he was cast as a high schooler in what musical turned failed 2021 film. And the final question of round three, number eight. Question number eight. Since he left them alone in the woods to get eaten by a cannibalistic crone, we guess it's okay for what Grimm Brothers duo to not forgive their dad. Number eight again. Since he left them alone in the woods to get eaten by a cannibalistic crone, we guess it's okay for what Grimm Brothers duo to not forgive their dad. All right, that is the end of round three. That means it's time for our next bonus question. Do exclamation point and the answer in the chat if you think your answer should be more than one word. Remove any spaces and mush it all together. Winner of the bonus question is, of course, entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a Geeks Who Drink swag box. And the bonus question winners also get a $5 credit to use at the Geeks Who Drink Shopatorium. All right, our bonus question for round three, and I need the first and the last name for this one. What After Earth actor should probably forgive his dad Will for never teaching him how capital letters work? Need the first and the last name for this one. What After Earth actor should probably forgive his dad Will for never teaching him how capital letters work? I think you guys have it figured out, so we're going to go over some answers for round number three. Round number three was the round we just read. That was famous people with famous parents. Number one, because of her family connections had nothing to do with her fame, Haley Bieber should forgive her dad, Stephen, one of four famous Baldwins. And no, Adam Baldwin is not a part of that family. Number two, what sixth president hopefully forgave his dad for making him wait a whole 24 years to take over the family business? That's John Quincy Adams. Number three, it was probably only through a rigorous blind audition process that O'Shea Jackson Jr. got the part playing his dad in Straight Outta Compton. Number four, in spite of being born into what was basically the Kardashians of pre-Soviet Russia, what war and peace author enjoyed no nepotism whatsoever? That's Leo Tolstoy. Number five, thanks to a lack of parental help, Irene Curie only had a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Number six, Jack Quaid is currently in a trillion different shows because of his talent and not due to any help from his parents, Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan. 
And number seven, Ben Platt clearly didn't get any help from his movie producing father when he was cast as a high schooler in Dear Evan Hansen. Wasn't he like 30 when they made that movie or something? Like, it, we're well past the 90210 stage of Hollywood. And number eight, since he left them alone in the woods to get eaten by a cannibalistic crone, we're guessing it's okay for what Grimm Brothers duo to not forgive their dad. That's Hansel and Gretel. And let's go over our answer for the bonus question. Bonus question, need the first and the last name for this one. What after Earth actor should probably forgive his dad Will for never teaching him how capital letters worked? That's Jaden Smith. Round number four tonight is Poultry in Motion. Poultry in Motion. It is around on screen birds. Poultry in Motion, it's around on screen birds. On on screen birds, in fact. If I could read, that would help. Poultry in Motion, around on on screen birds. Round four, number one. Number one, along with a cornucopia of other dad jokes, what president quipped, yes, we cran at his final White House turkey pardoning. Along with a cornucopia of other dad jokes, what president quipped, yes, we can at his final White House turkey pardoning. Moving on, round four, number two. Number two, even before his main squeeze, Camilla entered the picture. What Muppet had long been depicted with typically weird attraction to chickens? Even before his main squeeze, Camilla entered the picture. What Muppet had long been depicted with a typically weird attraction to chickens? Moving on, round four, number three. Question number three, the Charles Schultz Museum describes what Twitterer as Snoopy's secretary, tennis partner, beagle scout, and root beer drinking buddy. The Charles Schultz Museum describes what Twitterer as Snoopy's secretary, tennis partner, beagle scout, and root beer drinking buddy. Oh, don't get me started on the TikTok ban. Question number four. Number four of round four, the TikTok sensation Emily's Anger Management stars a very aggressive curlew and a human named Robert, the brother of Bindi and the son of what TV conservationist? The TikTok sensation Emily's Anger Management stars a very aggressive curlew and a human named Robert, the brother of Bindi, and the son of what TV conservationist? Oh, Miss Magoo, I have loved all of the Jeff Jackson draggings going on on TikTok right now. It's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant.
All right, round four, number five. Number five, disguised as a chicken, but pretty clearly a penguin, notorious criminal Feathers McGraw once hijacked a pair of robotic trousers from what claymation duo? Disguised as a chicken, but pretty clearly a penguin, notorious criminal Feathers McGraw once hijacked a pair of robotic trousers from what claymation duo? No, Miss Magoo, he made the video saying he doesn't think it's going to get banned after he voted for the ban. And Jeff Jackson used TikTok to get elected and win a primary for attorney general. Basically, he threw TikTok under the bus after using it for everything it was worth. That said, let's move on to number six. Number six, one headline said the best part about the BBC's Our Planet was the horny dancing birds, but our favorite thing was the smooth narration of what nonagenarian night. One headline said the best part about the BBC's Our Planet was the horny dancing birds, but our favorite thing was the smooth narration of what nonagenarian night. Yeah, basically, he's a politician, and he acted like a politician and got everything he could out of something and then threw it under the bus like they all do. Just everybody was convinced that he wasn't going to do that to them, and he really did. And second to last question around four, number seven. Question number seven. Because Hokey doesn't really mean anything, it's a maroon turkey mascot that revs up the fans of what Blacksburg-based university? Because Hokey doesn't really mean anything, it's a maroon turkey mascot that revs up the fans of what Black Blacksburg-based university? And final question round four, number eight. Question number eight, a news story about bald eagles overrunning Homer, Alaska blew up in 2006 after what still around comedy series used footage of the birds for its moment of zen. A news story about bald eagles overrunning Homer, Alaska blew up in 06 after what still around comedy series used footage of the birds for its moment of zen. Alright, that is the end of round four, so I got another bonus question for you. Don't forget to do exclamation point and your answer in the chat if you think your answer is more than one word. Move any spaces, punctuation, etc. and just mash it all together. Winner of the bonus question gets $5 in credit to use at the Geeks Who Drink Shopatorium and entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a big ol' Geeks Who Drink swag box. Alright, time for the round four bonus question. The Plains Wanderer, an endangered bird so awkward that scientists compare it to Mr. Bean, is native to what country that also has uh, cassowary and uh, kookaburras? The Plains Wanderer, an endangered bird so awkward that scientists compared it to Mr. Bean, is native to what country that also has cassowaries and kookaburras?
All right, I think you have that bonus answer all figured out, so let's go over some answers for round number four. Round number four was a round on on-screen birds, poultry in motion. Number one, along with a cornucopia of other dad jokes, what president quipped, yes, we can. Yes, we can at his final White House turkey pardoning was Barack Obama. Number two, even before his main squeeze Camilla entered the picture, what Muppet had long been depicted with a typically weird attraction to chickens? That's Gonzo. Number three, the Charles Schultz Museum describes what Twitterer as Snoopy's secretary, tennis partner, big ol' scout, and root drinking, root beer drinking buddy? Well, that's Woodstock. Number four, the TikTok sensation Emily's Anger Management stars a very aggressive curlew and a human named Robert, the brother of Bindi and the son of what TV conservationist? Steve Irwin. Number five, disguised as a chicken, but pretty clearly a penguin, notorious criminal Feathers McGraw once hijacked a pair of robotic trousers from Wallace and Gromit. Number six, one headline said the best part about the BBC's Our Planet was the horny dancing bird, but our favorite thing was the smooth narration of Sir David Attenborough. Number seven, because hokey doesn't really mean anything. It's a maroon turkey mascot that revs up the fans of what Blacksburg-based university? That's Virginia Tech. And number eight, a new story about bald eagles overrunning Homer, Alaska, blew up in 06 after what still around comedy series used footage of the birds for its moment of zen? Well, that's The Daily Show. And our bonus answer. Winner of the bonus question gets $5 credit for the Geeks Who Drink Shopatorium and entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a big ol' swag box. Bonus question. The plane's wanderer, an endangered bird so awkward that scientists compare it to Mr. Bean, is native to what country that also has cassowaries and kookaburras? That's Australia. Round five tonight is another eight-point round. If you still have a joker, save it. Save it. Our theme for round five tonight is power of the hair of the dog. The power of the hair of the dog. Now, we know you party animals are stupid. Still hung over from St. Patrick's Day yesterday, but don't worry. Just name the movies and TV shows, concocting some hangover cures that'll perk you right up. The power of the hair of the dog. We know you party animals are still hung over from St. Patrick's Day yesterday, so don't worry. Just name these movies and TV shows, concocting some hangover cures that'll perk you right up. Just name the movies and TV shows. It's an eight-point round. I'm going to run all eight clips for you twice to back to back. Let's go. Want to hear the story or not? Absolutely not. Please leave. After some trial and error. Dr. Stinsenheimer finally found the magic formula. Hang on. Funyuns? Tantrum soda? Sure. In 1941? Sure. They haven't made new tantrum since then. That stuff lasts a while. Anyway, the elixir was so Let's make some wake-up juice. Come on. Wow. In about 10 minutes... He's gonna be as sober as a priest on Sunday. Ten minutes. Why do we have to cut these things so damn close? Here, stick this clothespin on his nose. <laughs> and the prune juice. And the, and the meat juice. Oh. And son, help me. Help me over there so I can get to the vodka. The vodka? <laughs> It? Time for Hutch's hangover cure. What's in it? Pepto Bismol, Aunt Jemima mix, Tang, and a little flat tap. Oh, most important thing. And a raw egg. Saves lives, trust me. And? 
Oh man, that's gross. It's called a prairie oyster. Good for hangovers. You're the second person I've known who actually drinks those awful things. And who's the first? It was my husband. VT! We're back. Robin of Loxley? Robin of Loxley. Hmm. Let me see. Raven's egg. Blood of a hen. A little bit more blood, yes. Eyeballs of a crocodile. <laughs> Testicles of a... Eye of Newt. Tail of Newt. Rest of Newt. And blood of elf. Doink. This better be the elixir of life. I wish it were elixir of death, you fat sack. Oops. What? Apologies, your highness. I seem to... Here's the blood of a bat. Put in that. Put in that. Round about corner and go. In the poison entrails throat. For a charm of powerful trouble. Like a broth. Boil and bubble. Tell me. Thou unknown power. He knows they thought. He he speaks. After some trial and error, Dr. Stinsenheimer finally found the magic formula. Hang on. Funyuns? Tantrum soda? In about ten minutes, he's gonna be as sober as a priest on Sunday. Ten minutes. What do we have to do? And the prune juice, and the, and the tomato juice. Oh. And son, help me. Help me over there, son. Get to the vodka. What's in it? Pepto Bismol, Aunt Jemima mix, tang, and a little flat tap. Oh, most important thing. And a raw egg. Saves lives, trust me. Oh, man, that's gross. It's called a prairie oyster. Good for hangovers. You're the second person I've known who actually drinks those awful... Raven's egg. Blood of a hen. A little bit more blood, yes. Eyeballs of a crocodile. <laughs> Eye of Newt. Tail of Newt. Rest of Newt. And blood of elf. Doink. I seem to... Here's the blood of a bat. Put in that. Put in that. Round about four and go. In the poison entrails throat. And we're back. And that means it's time for the answers for round five. Round five was our video round. Let's go over those together. Number one. That's how I met your mother. I like it. Number two. That's Back to the Future Part Three. Number three. That's Sanford and Son. Number four, Scarcy, ah, Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch. Number five, Cowboy Bebop. Number six, that's Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Number seven. That's disenchantment. And number eight. That's the tragedy of Macbeth. Those are all of our answers for round five. I can't believe Cowboy Bebop ran and ended from 98 to 2000. That just makes me feel so old. 
All right, let's get into round six. Round six is our second 16-point round of the evening. It's a good round to think about using your joker on. Our theme for round six tonight is double up. Double up. Every question has two correct answers, and you get one point per answer. Simple. Every question in round six has two correct answers. You get one point per correct answer. That's it. Pretty easy. Round six, number one. Sorry, Margot Robbie. Which two people got acting Oscar nods for Barbie? Sorry, Margot Robbie. Which two people got acting Oscar nods for Barbie? And Jerfad, Macbeth is so good. It's so good. I, I watched it like a month or two ago and it's amazing. I mean, I already love Denzel Washington and pretty much everything he's in, but he just killed it in Macbeth. Round six, number two. Nepal is sandwiched between what two countries with over 40 times its population? Nepal is sandwiched between what two countries with over 40 times its population? Round six, double up. Question number three. Number three, don't say grapes, smartass. Don't say grapes. Mimosas and Bellinis are pretty similar cocktails, except that they're respectively made with what two fruits? Don't say grapes, guys. Just, just don't. Mimosas and Bellinis are pretty similar cocktails, except they're respectively made with what two fruits? Rihanna. All right, round six, number four. Question number four. Both bordering the Pacific Ocean, what two countries have hosted the American version of Love Island? Both bordering the Pacific Ocean, which two countries have hosted the American version of Love Island? Round six, number five. Fifth question, six round, number five. Along with a bunch of regular blockers, a roller derby team has what two positions that wear special symbols on their helmets? Along with a bunch of regular blockers, a roller derby team has what two positions that wear special symbols on their helmets? Round six, number six. Question number six of round six tonight. Which European capital cities are home to a Marie Curie museum? 
Which European capital cities are home to a Marie Curie museum? Number seven of round six. Question number seven. The Netflix shows Arcane and Edge Runners are based on what hit video games? The Netflix shows Arcane and Edge Runners are based on what hit video games? Final question in round six. I have another bonus after this. Number eight. Question number eight. Samuel L. Jackson and Brian Cranston did the audiobooks for Adam Mansbach's Go the F to Blank and You Have to Effing Blank. What two words go in those blanks? Samuel L. Jackson and Brian Cranston did the audiobooks for Adam Mansbach's Go the F to Blank and you have to effing blank. What two words go in the blanks? We have a bonus question for round six. And Eric, the reason my room is blue is because I couldn't find the remote control for my light strip. All right, bonus question for round six. Do exclamation point in your answer in the chat. If you think your answer is more than one word, remove any spaces, smash it all together. Bunner, ah, winner of the bonus question, of course, gets a $5 credit for the Geeks of Drink Shopatorium and entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a big old swag box. Bonus question time. Steven straight triple 20s, then a triple 19, then a double 12 is one route to the super rare nine throw finish in what bar game? Seven straight triple 20s, then a triple 19, then a double 12 is one route to the super rare nine throw finish in what bar game? I think everybody's got the bonus answer figured out, so why don't we go ahead and get into some answers for round six. Round six, double up. Question number one. Sorry, Margot Robbie, which two people got acting Oscar nods for Barbie? That's America Ferreira and Ryan Gosling. Number two, Nepal is sandwiched between what two countries with over 40 times its population? That's China and India. Number three, the answer, none of the answers in number three was grapes. Mimosas and Bellinis are pretty similar cocktails, except that they're made with orange and peach. Number four, both bordering the Pacific Ocean, what two countries have hosted the American version of Love Island? That's Fiji and the United States. 
Number five, along with a bunch of regular blockers, the Roller Burby team has what two positions that wear special symbols? That's a jammer and a pivot. Number six, which European capital cities are home to Marie Curie Museum? That's Paris, France and Warsaw, Poland. Number seven, the Netflix shows Arcane and Edge Runners are based on what hit video games? That's League of Legends and Cyberpunk 2077. Number eight, Sam Jackson and Brian Cranston did the audiobooks for Adam Mandback's Go the F2 blank and you have to fucking blank. Those two blanks are sleep and eat. And we're back to the bonus question. Winner of the bonus question gets $5 credit for the Geeks Who Drink Shopatorium and entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a big old swag box. Bonus question for round six was seven straight triple 20s, then a triple 19, then a triple, tw then a double 12 is one route to the super rare nine throw finish in darts. Darts. Our final round as always is random knowledge. Random knowledge is worth 16 possible points. Some of the questions in this round are gonna have multiple parts and are gonna be worth multiple points. Some of them are gonna have multiple answers. Just pay close attention to each question. Let's get into it with random knowledge. Number one. Number one, when he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Nickelodeon last year, what Hasbro hero pledged to seal the bond be between humans, Maximals, and Autobots? Number one, again, when he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Nickelodeon last year, what Hasbro hero pledged to seal the bond between humans, Maximals, and Autobots? I mean, you're not wrong, Eric. The bar for that award is like the ground. Question number two. Number two is worth two points. On June 28th, Peru celebrates the national day of what raw fish dish? And for a second point, on no November 18, Colombia has a national day for what stuffed cornmeal cakes? Number two is worth two points. On June 28th, Peru celebrates the national day of what raw fish dish? And on November 18th, Colombia has a national day for what stuffed cornmeal cakes? Final round, random knowledge, number three. Number three is worth one point. What big four sports team aptly anagrams to wise, lukewarm beer? What big four sports team aptly anagrams to wise, lukewarm beer? All right, moving on, random knowledge, question number four. Number four is a three-point question, three points. 
a John from South Dakota, a John from Texas, and a Rick from Florida are currently angling to replace Mitch McConnell as GOP Senate leader. Name them. Three points, a John from South Dakota, a John from Texas, and a Rick from Florida are currently angling to replace Mitch McConnell as GOP Senate leader. Name them. All right, final round, random knowledge. Midway point of the last round, question number five. Number five is worth one point. He had a license to kill, not trespass. What Irish actor recently agreed to pay a $500 fine for wandering off a path in Yellowstone National Park? He had a license to kill, not trespass. What Irish actor recently agreed to pay a $500 fine for wandering off a path in Yellowstone National Park? Yeah, you are right about that, Eric, and he's vapor locked like he has been three or four times. Final round, random knowledge, question number six. Number six, it's another three-point question. Three points are the characters in the Hulu, Hulu series Shogun or makers of high-quality shotguns. Three points are they characters in the Hulu series Shogun or are they makers of high-quality shotguns. First, Benelli. Second, Blackthorn. And third, Alvito. Three points are the characters in the Hulu series Shogun or makers of high quality shotguns. First, Benelli. Second, Blackthorn. And third, Alvito. And penultimate question of the entire quiz, final round, number seven. Question number seven, Kodak wants $5,500 for its new home movie camera, which shoots on what old school format that lent its name to an okayish J.J. Abrams film? Kodak wants $5,500 for its new home movie camera, which shoots on what old school format that lent its name to an okayish J.J. Abrams film. And final question of the quiz, number eight. Question number eight, four points. Four points, Sandra O oh got four Best Actress Emmy noms for what BBC spy series? Second, in Ohm's Law, what electrical word does the V stand for? Third, Broadway's longest running review was the not at all Indian Oh, 
what? And fourth, does an O. Henry candy bar have peanuts or rice? Number eight again is worth four points. Sandra O oh got four Best Actress Emmy nods for what BBC spy series? Second in Ohm's Law, what electrical word does the V stand for? Third, Broadway's longest running review was the not at all Indian O oh, what? And fourth, does an O. Henry candy bar have peanuts or rice? All right, everybody, that is the end of our final round. That means it is time for our last bonus question of the evening. Don't forget, do exclamation point in your answer in the chat. If you think it's more than one word, remove any spaces, mush it all together. Winner of the bonus gets a $5 credit for the Geeks Who Drink Shopatorium and entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a big old Geeks Who Drink swag box. Let's get into the bonus. Marie Curie's notebooks are still so radioactive that they're kept in boxes lined with what element that is itself not great for your health. Marie Curie's notebooks are still so radioactive that they're kept in boxes lined with what element that is itself not great for your health. I think you guys have it all figured out, so let's go over the answers for Random Knowledge, the final round. Random Knowledge, number one. When he received a Lifetime Achievement Award from Nickelodeon last year, what Hasbro hero pledged to seal the bond between humans, Maximals, and Autobots? That's Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. Anybody reading the new Transformers series from Image? Uh, it's violent. There's a lot of, like, Transformer death. It's, it's kind of great. Number two, two points on June 28th. Peru celebrates the National Day of Ceviche. And on November 18th, Colombia has a National Day for what stuffed cornmeal cake? That is arepas. Arepas. Number three, what Big Four sports team aptly anagrams to wise lukewarm beer? What's the Milwaukee Brewers? Number four, three points. A John from South Dakota, a John from Texas, and a Rick from Florida are currently angling to replace Mitch McConnell as GOP Senate lead. They are John Toon, excuse me, John Thune, John Cornyn, and Rick Scott. Number five, a license to kill, not trespass. What Irish actor recently got a $500 fine for wandering off a path in Yellowstone? It's Pierce Brosnan. And number six, three points. Are the characters in the Hulu series Shogun or makers of high quality shotguns? Benelli makes shotguns. Blackthorn makes sh is from Shogun, not makes shotguns. And Alvito is also from Shogun. Number seven, Kodak wants 5500 for its new home movie camera, which shoots on Super 8. Super 8. J.J. Abrams really wanted to be the new Spielberg with that movie, but he's so much flash and no substance in almost everything he does, and it's so disappointing. The stuff he's made that's been really good, like Lost or Alias, was taken over by other people and written by them. 
And final question of the round, number eight, four points. Sandra Oh got four Best Actress Emmy noms for Killing Eve. In Ohm's Law, the V stands for Voltage. Broadway's longest-running review was the not-at-all Indian O oh, Calcutta. And does an O'Hendry bar have peanuts or rice? Well, that has peanuts. And that means it is the end of our quiz. It is time for our bonus question answer. Bonus question. Marie Curie's notebooks are still so radioactive that they're kept in boxes lined with lead. So Superman can't read them. That is the end of our quiz. Thank you so much for coming and playing with us every Monday like you do. I am AJ. I've been your host. This has been Geeks Who Drink. And as always, we're awesome.